worship with us today. We are so blessed to have you here. So I'm having myself and my wife, Lady Cherise. Thank God for her as always. Amen. Pastor Erna, thank God for her. Amen. And Pastor Tanisha and Sister Giovanna, Minister Wayne, all of the staff, we just want to thank God for you being here in the house of the Lord. Let's turn our attention to the screen. Let's see what's happening at the way this week, and then we'll come back and introduce to you some of our ministry leaders featured at our fair today. Welcome to The Way. Let's celebrate our most recent class of new members. We had a great The Way 101 class yesterday and welcomed in eight new people to The Way. Today is our ministry fair. We will have a chance to hear about different ways to serve at The Way. As we return to two services, we will need people to step up and serve at 9 a.m. and at 11. Whether you have an hour a month or a couple of hours a week, we hope all of you will consider using your gifts to serve at The Way. Stick around after service. We will have food, music, and you can connect with all of our ministry leaders and learn how you can sign up. Also, make sure to download the app. It's one of the easiest ways to sign up to be a part of a ministry at The Way. Go to the App Store and search for Church Center, and then locate The Way inside the app. This Tuesday, August 27th, is our annual Interfaith Blood Drive. The Way partners with local faith communities to host a blood drive. Tuesday from noon to 6, we will be helping to host this blood drive across the street at Netivot Shalom. Please consider signing up to donate blood if you can. The link will be in The Way's Facebook page. Come out and be a part of this important community event. And drum roll, please. Next Sunday, we return to two services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. So mark your calendars. All you early birds can return to 9 a.m. service. Yana will be available only during 11 a.m. And last but not least, take a moment to take out your phones and share the Waze live stream on your Facebook page. Or you can tweet the link to the YouTube live stream. Let's make sure that everyone has a chance to be a part of what God is doing at The Way. Thanks for worshiping with us today. Clap your hands if you are glad about it. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. All right, people of God, turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter number 12. Amen. We are in the lectionary for this week. Amen. And uh, the book of Hebrews is one of the final books of the New Testament Christian canon that was uh, kind of ratified by many of the early uh, patristics and matristics back in the day. These uh, letters uh, to the early church were often contested. People were always trying to figure out which one should we add, which one should we not add, which one should we uh, put in a secondary canon. And Hebrews was one of these letters that was uh, added uh, on the final round, as they say, mostly because they uh, were not always sure who the author was. Was the author Paul or a student of Paul or a student of some of the early uh, disciples and, and whatnot. But the, the date of this letter and the, the focus of this letter uh, to the early church uh, kind of helped it to pass the muster. And some of the earliest uh, church fathers, uh, Clement of Alexandria, who of course we know if you're from Alexandria, Alexandria is in Egypt, and so that means he must have been an African. Touch your neighbor and say, Amen, Amen. That that many of, of these letters, Amen, were very much uh, kind of affirmed and ratified by folks who were in the earliest part of our tradition, uh, making sure that we had all we needed to to trust the the, the message and and the the text that were going to help guide us, be a guidepost for our formation 
in our discipleship. And so Hebrews chapter number 12 is a very familiar chapter. Most of us probably who've read the Bible a little bit uh, usually start on the front side of Hebrews chapter 12 where it says, seeing we are uh, surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the same which easily besets us. And this, the chapter previous to that is usually called the Hall of Faith where you find uh, a list of all of the the, the uh, Jewish uh, kind of saints and champions of the faith who endured lots of persecution and still held on to their faith. And so this second part of the passage of the book of Hebrews chapter 12 is a great culmination of uh, a lot of what uh, the writer is attempting to communicate to a people in a time that are enduring great persecution. They are definitely a Jewish audience, some of whom are living outside of the land of Israel, Palestine. Uh, they are young in their faith, which means that they probably came to the faith uh, with other kinds of religious sensibilities, and, and they were trying to figure out how to make all of this stuff work, uh, particularly because they were facing great persecution. This letter was probably written between 65 and 70 AD, which means that it was written about 30 years after the death of Jesus and a few years before the temple of Jerusalem was burnt down and Nero lost his mind. And so you're dealing with a lot of folk trying to follow Jesus under very contested circumstances, <clears throat> right? Not to mention all the internal stuff that we just deal with every day. Somebody say amen, right? Ain't it something that you can have, you know, pressure on the outside, and then, of course, we got to still deal with all of our internal stuff. And the gospel speaks to all of it all at the same time. Amen. I, I love how Pastor Nisha said that there's no junior Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen, right? But there ain't no, like, Holy Ghost for the, 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 the culture and a Holy Ghost for your soul and a Holy Ghost for your spirit. There's just the Holy Ghost. And how many know God knows how to deal with everything that concerns us all at the same time? Uh, we serve a great God. Somebody say amen, right? So this passage is a wonderful passage for us to take note of. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to uh, attempt to be particularly brief because I want us to spend some time in our, in our, our, our uh, uh, ministry fair. But let's look at pa uh, verse number 18. Uh, the, the scripture is, is powerful. I think I'm reading from the message translation. Uh, I believe so. And so it says, uh, unlike your ancestors, you didn't come to Mount Sinai. All that volcanic blaze and earth shaking rumble in order to hear God speak. The ear splitting words and soul shaking message terrified them and they begged God to stop. When they heard the words, if an animal touches the mountain, it's as good as dead. They all were afraid to move. Even Moses was terrified. This is kind of going back to God's first revelation uh, uh, to the, 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 the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And, and, and the writer is reminding the audience that the, the messages you're hearing today weren't as dramatic and, and terrifying as the first time God spoke to God's people. Right? When God spoke to God's people the first time, their head almost exploded. Somebody say amen, right? It was too much. Talk about sensory overload. Verse 22. No, that's not your experience at all. You've come to Mount Zion, the city where the living God resides. I can preach on that just by itself. The invisible Jerusalem is populated by throngs of festive angels and Christian citizens. It is the city where God is judged with judgments that make us just. You've come to Jesus who presents us with a new covenant. Somebody say a new covenant. A fresh charter. Somebody say a fresh charter from God. God is the mediator. I'm sorry, Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Jesus is the mediator of this covenant. The murder of Jesus, unlike Abel's murder, a homicide that cried out for vengeance, the murder of Jesus became a proclamation of grace. Talk about Jesus dying on the cross, right? Verse 25, listen, so don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what will happen to us? 
if we turn our backs on heavenly mornings. God's voice that time shook the earth to its foundations. This time, God's told us this quite plainly. God will also rock the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom, stem to stern. The phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverent before God, for God is not an indifferent bystander. God is actively cleaning house, torching all that needs to burn, and God won't quit until it's all cleansed. For God is a consuming fire. Woo! My, my, my. Word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So we're going to talk for a few moments. Our unshakable kingdom. Our unshakable kingdom. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you and send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them we have an unshakable kingdom. Tell them that. Amen. Pat yourself on the chest and say, I am an unshakable kingdom kingdom. Now, uh, one of the greatest challenges you and I will face in this life will be attempting to reconcile the contradictions of the world as it is with the world as we know it should be. One could even argue that we will have great challenge uh, reconciling the world that has been with the world as it's described today, and certainly the world we aspire to live into. This past week, the country was forced to, to, to reckon with our legacy of terror and white supremacy as the New York Times released a powerful journalistic review called 1619. I don't know how many of you saw that this week. A, 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 a powerful, um, uh, description and, and, and reflection of 400 years of the impact that slavery as it's told from the beginning of uh, the arrival at Jamestown, I believe. I think Malcolm X said it best that we didn't land on Plymouth Rock, amen. And Plymouth Rock landed on us, amen. And, 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 and these 400 years since, uh, have told a, a very troubling story about a country that is attempting to grow up. And dare I say that this may be arguably the story of creation, that from the beginning we have always been attempting to grow into God's divine purposes. That we've always had a, a, a challenge trying to to figure out, can we reach and match and live into uh, this idea where God says that when creation was, 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 was completed, God stepped back and said, this is good. And yet, when we look at creation, sometimes good is the least available description <laughs> that comes to our mind. Uh, that, that, that these last 400 years have indeed, uh, if seen through the prism of the genocide of native peoples and the, the, the chattel slavery and subjugation of African bodies, this country's story is not one that could be described as good. And, 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 and you know, when you try to like speak this kind of truth, 
there's some folk who love a beautiful lie rather than an ugly truth. You ever met some folk like that? It's kind of like, you know, you, you, you can't tell them nothing that, 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 that is not, you know, uh, affirming their beautiful lie. And they get upset with you like you are attacking them. It's like, hmm, that's a fascinating development. Because <laughs> I thought the truth will make you free. Which goes to show you that some people would rather be bound in a beautiful lie than free embracing an ugly truth. And so it's, it's been an interesting week watching certain folk push back on this history. Uh, particularly folk who claim to be Christian. I mean, I'll be trying to figure out now, you know, it's one thing... Uh, to, to be in active denial, uh, it's another thing to just outright lie. And, and I pray, you know, there's sometimes I'm in active denial. It's just, I just, it's just too much, so I'm just going to block this part out because I just can't take it. It's nothing just to be lying, you know. No, that didn't happen. Really? Like folks try to deny the Holocaust, say that didn't happen. Really? No, these, these atrocious things happen, and guess what? They happened and are still happening under our watch. If there were any amount, well, I don't want to be so, 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 so uh, expansive in that statement. If, if there were enough good sense in folk, whenever these things come up, you would just apologize. I'm sorry, I repent. We, we definitely got to learn and do better. But not our country. <laughs> Certainly not a large swath of folk in our country. You start talking about the past and the present, folk have enough hubris and ahistorical postures where they will totally gaslight us into believing none of this happened. And if it did happen, like, like, like our deceived, misinformed, uh, 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 off brother Kanye off would say that uh, it was by our own choice and it was good for us. Amen. But that's why we got to keep telling the truth. We keep reminding ourselves of our history. Why? Because the history that has produced us when not reckoned with properly will put us on shaky foundation. If we build our life off of lies and have truths, when the weight of the truth sits on us, part of your whole constitution will crumble. That is why I believe one of the great tasks of Christian discipleship is to help us wrestle with the truth, the whole truth pertaining to our God, ourselves, and one another. Because if we can't be true to God, ourselves, and one another, we will not be faithful. And more than, you know, we grew up in the holiness tradition where, you know, you can't smoke, drink, you know, steal, sex, uh, you can't lie. You can't, and and we, we had all the don'ts, and, 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 I, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with many of the don'ts. But holiness is, is more than just the list of don'ts. Holiness is about faithfulness. It's about our capacity and ability to live into the faithful calling of God on God's people in the world. And, and I, I, I gesture to this passage quite, quite frequently. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, in, a, in a very important uh, uh, sermon called The Transform Nonconformist. And, 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 and I, I found this passage to come up for me as I was preparing um, because, uh, you know, of course, the text talks about an unshakable kingdom. And I remember when I was in seminary and, and I was taking my City of God class, Augustine City of God, and he talked about how, you know, the kingdom is always uh, uh, coexisting, the heavenly kingdom coexisting with the earthly kingdom. 
And Dr. King pulled that concept and, and put it in a sermon, and, and, and I, I want to read it because I find it to be very apropos for what I'm hoping you and I wrestle with when we're talking about an unshakable kingdom. Dr. King says, every true Christian is a citizen of two worlds, the world of time and the world of eternity. And so although the Christian finds themselves in the colony of time, their ultimate allegiance is to the empire of eternity. In other words, the Christian owes their ultimate allegiance, everybody say ultimate allegiance, to God. And if any earthly institution conflicts with God's will, it is the Christian duty to revolt against it. Amen, amen, amen. Now, this ain't the kind of Martin Luther King they read on MLK Day. Somebody say amen, right? <laughs> be like, I have a dream. Dr. King, I got a dream for you, amen. My dream is to overthrow all this injustice and to tear down the kingdom of the enemy when it stands against the kingdom or as one of our muharistas uh, uh, loved ones, I can't remember her name, calls it the kingdom, right? This, this sensibility where we remember that we belong to one another and it is our responsibility collectively to resist any formation of human or social concern that strip away at the dignity of God's people and creation. Part of what will make you an unshakable kingdom or kingdom is to remember, listen, you are uniquely constituted as a vessel of honor by God. The, 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 the uh, companion passage for today uh, which I immediately thought I was going to preach when I first read these texts last week, but then I got sucked into Hebrews chapter 12, uh, is Jeremiah's call narrative, because I love to preach Jeremiah's call narrative. Jeremiah chapter 1, it says, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. God consecrated you, meaning God set you apart. God called you to do all kinds of things that includes building up and tearing down expanding and restricting all these actions that bear witness to the uniqueness of who you are and then uh god tells jeremiah listen people are going to fight against you but i this is what this text says i have made you strong like a rock can you imagine how differently you would go through life if you believed God made you as strong as a rock. I'm not talking about like you made you a rock. I'm talking about God made you as strong as a rock. That, that, that you have an internal constitution that has been crafted by God that allows you to withstand all the external onslaughts to your being. Ooh, I was going to do something with that passage. I'll have to do it later. Amen. <laughs> but I think it ties in because when you and I truly live into God's constitution of who we are, yeah. you become an unshakable person. Woo. It don't mean that you don't get shook up. It means that there's a part of you that will not break down. Mm. Now, you know, I've got 10 minutes here. Uh, I, I, I need you to, 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 to appreciate a few things that will make you unshakable. The text says, uh, first and foremost, that in verse number two, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to the God who judges all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. What is all that saying? You are connected to a cloud. 
Somebody say stay connected to the cloud. Amen. Amen. You know, in, in our technological age, we, we appreciate what the cloud is. The cloud is some, you know, technically speaking, it's some satellite up in space that allows you to transmit all of your uh, uh, information into a drive somewhere else you don't know, but you buy more space when you need it. The space don't run out, you just got to buy more. Well, in the text, if you read up a little further where it says that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, it is saying in many respects that you and I are a part of a cloud of people who have gone before us. And this cloud of people are watching us and they're cheering us on, reminding us that we can make it. Staying connected to this cloud is important in this moment. Why? Because this moment will like to make you think that you stand here on the strength of your own accomplishments. Well, you know, I went to school and uh, I studied and I, 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 I got the bank account. I got the degree. I got the boo. I got the house. And I did it all by myself. And so I know what's wrong with the rest of these people. Why don't they get their self together? Not appreciating that the reason you are here where you are today is because somebody prayed. Lord, help me in here today. Somebody sacrificed. Somebody opened a door. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, stay connected to the cloud. Stay connected to the cloud. And see, see, one of our challenges in a radically individualistic world is to forget that we are an extension of the cloud. The scripture reads that we are in the city of God, Zion. Hey Amen. You ain't in the city all by yourself. If you was in a city by yourself, it would be an abandoned city. I wish I could talk to you today. Man, so, oh, I'm, you know, just me, myself, and I. No, you, you, you folk, you abandon. And don't let your city get sieged while you're there by yourself. The enemy will overrun us every time. But we must stay collected to the cloud. Why? Because in the cloud, there is history there. There are lessons there. There are stories of a people who went through exactly what you're going through and made it out without throwing in the towel, without throwing it away their faith, without losing their mind or their life. They stayed strong. One of the great challenges of us today is we get seduced by the practices of ahistorical living think we 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 not a part of history uh -huh. don't get so smart don't get so privileged that's what's wrong with the country today the country is buckling under the weight of the cloud and you have to be sure that you're a part of the right cloud because how many know not every cloud will get you the information that's you need right. i'll give your neighbor a high five and tell them be a part of the right cloud now the right cloud Amen. You, 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 if you, if you, if, if you're not a part of the right cloud, you will pull out of that cloud the wrong lessons. You may pull down denial. You may pull down uh, 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 falsities, fake news. Uh, you may pull down, uh, uh, what other words can I use to describe him? Amen. You can just, you can just pull down all the things that are death to you. When God is actually welcoming you and I to participate in the cloud. A cloud of witnesses that keep reminding you that your worst condition will not be your total definition. That will remind you that you can make it through your hardest trial and come out with a testimony. The cloud that will keep showing you that death does not have the final say 
You got to stay connected to the cloud. So, 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 so what, what are the questions I want you to think about? Do you live in an ahistorical manner? The first question I want you to just think about, just, you know, contemplate. Are you so forgetful of your history that you think it started when you got here? I want to tell you, if that's how you live, you have so little wisdom at your disposal. I tell folks, the school of hard knocks is overrated, praise God. Man, I'd rather use the, the, the wisdom of the cloud. <laughs> uh, I, I can't, uh, how do you embrace our histories as testimony rather than condemnation? One of the great challenges of the 1619 response is that people see the truth, our histories, as condemnation rather than as an opportunity to not repeat the same mistakes over again. Why is it important 400 years later to keep telling these stories? Because we stand on the brink of reinscribing the very genocidal practices with many of these folk in office and sadly too many Christians, so-called, unaware of their history. So they don't, oh, this could never happen. It is happening. Yes, talking about it can't never happen. Man, we got children in cages. We got folk being shot down in the streets by police. We got whole rows of community being pushed out of homes and into tents. It's happening. So don't say this can't never happen. It's happening. Oh, well, I believe God's going to take care of it. The way God took care of it before, listen is that God called a church to stand up and champion abolition, champion radical charity, champion housing the homeless and healing the sick. God didn't snap his fingers like, 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 like Thanos and, and, and everything just changed. God called a church to be faithful. And in the faithfulness of the church and others, the evil of history was halted. So don't, don't, don't ignore your history, your personal trials, the lessons you must learn. Don't try to hide it and bury it out of shame. Own what God has brought you through and use it as a testimony for someone else who what is going to go through quite similar what you've gone through. I wish that we were always the only one. That's what the devil will whisper here. Oh, you're the only one. You're not the only one to be depressed. You're not the only one for your marriage to not work. You're not the only one whose kids is full of the devil. Somebody say amen. You're not the only one that, that, that fought on your job and lost. You're not the only one that got evicted from your house. Got, you're not the only one. So because you're not the only one, you ought to find the folk that went through what you went through and still made it. And trust and believe that if God did it for them... Oh, give your neighbor a high five and tell him God will do it for me. Uh, the second thing, the second thing that will make you unshakable is that God will often uh, uh, add to your life by subtracting. Somebody say addition by subtraction. Uh, the, 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 verse, the verse says that there's going to be one last shaking. Uh, you know, you know, I, I, I'm not one of these folk who enjoy earthquakes. Amen. And, 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 you know, when an earthquake happens and it's something that your whole body, mind and spirit get aligned real quick, you could be sleeping in the middle of the night and you'll get a shaking and all of a sudden everything's awake and you're like, Oh, and you can't go back to sleep. The, 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 the text is pulling from Haggai, one of the prophets uh, in, 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 in the Old Testament, uh, talking about how God was prophesying, boldly proclaiming to the children of Israel that in a little while, everybody say a little while, God says, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land said, I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, listen, and I will fill the house with glory. 
The silver is mine. The gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. And then the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. And in this place, I will grant peace. When I was a little bit of a younger preacher, I used to preach this passage, and I would tell folk, yo, greater shall be later. Uh, you, does, does that still work for you? Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, yo, greater shall be later. That, that, that sometimes God is doing a shaking because God is going to provide a blessing for you later down the line. Why? Because there's some things in our lives that God has to shake loose from us. And if I can make this application again to yourself and our country, there's a lot of things holding on to us that are keeping us from being great. So God has to shake us once more again. Ooh. God will keep shaking. You know, says, I'm going to shake you once more. And it's like, how many times is once more? Until you get loose. <laughs> uh, I'd be praying, Lord, just make me, make, 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 make me free the first time. Because I don't want to be shook up by you too many more times. Why? Because God says in the shaking, listen, there are some things that will be shaken off of you and the things that remain are the essentials. God is shaking you and I. God is shaking the country. God is shaking the world because there are things holding on to us that are not essential. And those things are keeping you and I from being faithful, from being great, from being God's, God's ideal in God's imagination when God dreamed of you in eternity. And that's, that's, that's what's happening. You know, God's shaking the United States of America. Because for 400 years, white supremacy and racism has been too attached to us. I, I love Toni Morrison. Uh, she, she says it best uh, uh, that if you can only be tall because someone else is on their knees, then you have a serious problem. And then she adds on, and white people have a very, very serious problem because too many white folks are invested in white supremacy and whiteness and human hierarchy. Unless you think you're off the hook, non-white folks, too many of us are invested in white supremacy and whiteness and, and human hierarchy. And God is trying to shake all of that stuff off of us but the real concern for many of us, if we were to take the truth pill, is that when God starts shaking, we don't know what's going to remain. We will be a radically different person when God gets done shaking some of us. But the parts of you that remain are the essentials for the unshakable kingdom God's created you to be. Once more, I will shake the heavens. I'll shake you up. But in the shaking, don't worry if certain things fall to the side. Those things, those things weren't essential for who you have been created to be. I know for some of us, it's like, but I need this. This is who I am. God said, that ain't who you are. Because if that's who you are, then it would stay right there during the shaking. Anybody ever thought you couldn't live without something and then it got taken away and you kept living? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I guess I didn't need that. Didn't know how your life was going to continue without then you got it. And wow, I didn't know, man, you did something. How what I thought I could not survive without God revealed it was unessential. Oh, my prayer for us is that if anybody catches this in this last and evil day, 
it will first be the church. All this racism and sexism and capitalism and colonialism and homophobia and transphobia and, and, and self-immolation and all these things that we think we need in order to define ourselves over and against someone else, those things are non-essential. I hope that we get clear about what is essential. It's the last point. What is essential? Our God is a consuming fire. Fire is essential. Fire. You're going to need something inside of you. Listen to this now. That will purify you refine you, warm you, illuminate your pathway, fuel you. The fire of God, even through the Hebrew text, serves so many different roles, all at the same time. God's presence is essential. The fire of God that consumes, that empowers, that allows your life to not be overwhelmed by that which the fire can burn away. It is this fire that is essential. Cultivate the fire of God. Just as much as you cultivate your career trajectory. Your unessential, but you think it's essential relationships. <laughs> uh, cultivate the fire of God. How do I cultivate the fire of God? Well... The practices of our tradition, our faith, teach us that. Prayer, communication with God. If you and I aren't in regular prayer and communication with God, how can you ever overwhelm the voices that are telling you the opposite of what God says you are? If you're not in prayer and communication with God, how do you get the direction you need? How do you get fed again? The ugly truth when the beautiful lie is trying to keep being the compass for your existence. Stand with me. Come on, we're going to pray for a minute or two. I am, everybody say, I am an unshakable kingdom. Say it again. I am an unshakable kingdom. Grab the hand of the person next to you, look at him, tell him you are. Tell him we are an unshakable kingdom. God bless the person who I'm touching right now. You know, you know, you know, God, the parts of them that continue to be at stake, hanging in the balance because of the active denial, the the wicked schemes, the internal wrestling, and it is attempting to shake us apart when you are only wanting to shake loose the unessentials. I pray as I touch them, God, you will bring to them strength and victory and healing and power. I pray that you will bring to them hope and love pray that you will bring to them, Lord God, a fire that is a consuming presence. Leave no part of them untouched. Leave no part of them, Lord God, free from the inner workings of your spirit, but all the way through from their head to their toe. 
Lord God, from the inside out. Make them unshakable. Make the parts of them that must remain unshakable. Lord God, those things that must fall, God, we by faith declare that we will release those things and let them fall to the ground. But those things that are in them that must remain, that must persist, I pray, God, that you will help and cause them to be unshakable. Now lift your hands right where you're standing. It's me, oh Lord, and I stand in the need of prayer. It is not my mother. It's not my father. It's not my sister. It's not my brother. But it's me, oh Lord, and I need you. Somebody say, I need you, Lord. Say it again. I need you, Lord. Say it. I need you, Lord. I need you, God, to save my body, my soul, my spirit. Save my mind. I need you, God, to make me brand new. I need you, God, to correct the things that the enemy has tried to pervert i need you god to lift me out of this horrible pit in this place and let my mind be re re remembering lord the the special unique constitution that you had for me in your divine imagination in eternity god where you said you set me apart and you called me for this moment in this season i pray god that my relationships and and my circumstances and my trials will not over determine who you've called me to be break every yoke and loose every chain and do it in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted just for a few moments and just tell the lord lord i give you my everything lord make me unshakable as i go into this next season make me unshakable make me steadfast and unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that my labor my work my struggle is not in vain and god i pray you'll do it right now in the name of jesus i pray god that you'll heal me right now in the name of jesus i pray god that you'll restore me and that you'll set me free in Jesus name in Jesus name I dare you to take a few moments and just receive the blessings of the Lord receive the Spirit of God receive the healing of God God is here and God wants to download God wants to download from the cloud into your being and into your spirit and into your soul receive it right now receive it God I reach up and I grab what I need I draw it down I draw down peace and I draw down faith and I draw down courage and I draw down anointing I receive it I receive it I receive it I receive it it's mine it's mine God give it to me give me what I need do it right now in the name of Jesus Somebody say I am an unshakable kingdom somebody say we are an unshakable kingdom Hug two or three people and tell them you are an unshakable kingdom. Come on, if you believe that, let's clap our hands and bless the name of the Lord today. Unshakable, unshakable, unshakable.